Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and I hope you've all had a really fantastic Christmas and looking forward to 2023. I certainly am. Now in this video I'm going to go through some of the gear, uh, some of my favourite gear that I've used and purchased or I've been sent for review in 2022 and I've split it up into various categories. There will be a playlist in the description so if you want to look at individual videos of this gear uh, by all means do so. You'll find most of the videos on my playlist and it'll also be Amazon and affiliate links to some of the gear. If you do find it, you want to purchase any of it, there will be links in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get into the first category. It's my favourite compact camera of 2022 that I've been using during the course of a year. And now I love going out and about with a compact camera. I don't always want to take out one of my bigger cameras. Uh, so a compact camera is great for me. And I've got three cameras in this category. I've got two runner-ups and then I've got the winner. Uh, the first runner-up is the Sony ZV-1F, which we have here. It's got your articulating uh, screen, um, takes great photographs. Uh, and takes great video. The, uh, it's been slated really because this camera doesn't shoot raw and it's got contrast detect autofocus. So that kind of lets it down. But the reason why it's a runner up for me is because uh, I haven't had it very long, so I haven't been able to take a great deal of photographs with it, but I do enjoy its compact size. But it hasn't got a viewfinder, so um, but that for me is a bit of a drawback when you're taking photographs. So that's my first runner up. My second runner up is a really old camera, but it's new to me. I actually purchased it in 2022, actually not that long ago. And it is the Canon uh, GX5 or G5X, the Canon G5X. Now I've not reviewed this camera yet, but I go out with this all the time. It's a great little camera. Uh, 20 in, a 20 megapixel sensor, one inch sensor, um, but you know, three inch articulating screen, uh, HD video, dual pixel autofocus. It's got a viewfinder. Uh, so, you know, great for me. And it's really compact, very, very well made. And this was fantastic value for money for money because I bought it used from Wet's Photographic. So the Canon G5X comes in as a very close runner up. In fact, it's almost tied to the winner. The winner is the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And this is it here. Um, it's a mobile phone, but it's got great camera in it. And I use this camera all the time. Obviously it's a phone, so I've got it on me all the time. But I picked this because the image quality is great from the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Take a look at my first review and you'll see what I mean. I use it primarily for taking photographs when I'm out and about because it's a great photographic tool and it's got all sorts of features within this phone. I will leave a link uh, in the description of this video to my Flickr page where you can take a look at the images taken with a Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, I think you'll find as well, they are great. There's not really any need to take out a compact camera such as my, um, wherever it is, such as my Sony ZV-1F or my uh, Canon G5X. Um, I've got so much gear on the table here. Where is it? Here it is. Um, you don't really need these sort of compact cameras. Hence the reason why the sound of compact cameras has plummeted because mobile phones have become so, so good. Um, I do get a lot of comments in, uh, on my videos that you know, the mobile phone will never be able to replace your bigger camera. I don't think it's intended to do so, but it certainly replaces the compact camera for me. I want to take decent photographs that I can instantly upload to social media. Can't do that with a compact camera. I know you can take the SD card out, you can put it in a reader, plug it into the phone, or you can use the apps, but they're very unreliable. Nothing better than a great camera on the phone. So that wins. The Google Pixel 6 Pro wins the category of my favourite compact camera that I've been using this year. Now to my favourite lens that I've purchased in 2022, and it, this comes down to two lenses. Now, obviously, I'm using a lot of cameras here. I've got my Nikon over there, and I've got my uh, GH5 there, I've got my Canon there. Um, so, you know, I'm using lenses all the time. So it's very difficult to pick uh, two favourite lenses, but I have done, because I like the quality of these lenses. The runner-up 
um, a very close runner-up is the Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 f 2.8 to 4 lens, micro four thirds, and this is the lens here. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful lens. Uh, very, very well made, uh, weather sealed, um, great focus and zoom rings, great lens hood. I love the way the lens hood works. Um, and it's just a great all-round lens. Um, again, I'll leave images taken with this lens uh, on a link to the, uh, my Flickr page, so you can have a look at them there. I use this lens with my Panasonic GH6 um, and various other Micro Four Thirds cameras. I normally use it on my Panasonic GH5, which is over there filming the wide shot, but I've swapped it out to my Olympus lens for now uh, to film this video so I can actually show you this lens. But, you know, very, very nicely made lens and it deserves to be the runner up. In fact, it could easily have been the winner. But the winner is my Canon RF 50mm f1.8 lens. I use that constantly. I use it on me, it's a full frame lens, so I use it on my Canon RP, which is what we're filming the close up shot here with, and we're actually using the Canon 50mm RF 1.8 lens. So I can't physically show you the lens because it's filming the close up shot here. Um, I used to also use it extensively on my Canon R7 here in the studio. So it's a great portrait lens. It gives you that lovely bokeh in the background. I can't use an 85mm lens here in the studio. I can't get the camera far enough away to use it. So the 50mm is a great lens. So, uh, and it's great value for money. It's not a particularly expensive lens. So if you have an RF body, be it the R10 or the R7, you know, the, the APS-C bodies, or one of their full frame bodies, you're not gonna go wrong buying the Canon RF 50mm f1.8, particularly if you're on a tight budget. And you can see the results of it because you're looking at the results of it. You're looking at it now. So, you know, it is a great, great lens. Now my favorite video camera of 2022. Now in the old days, that would have been a camcorder because that's what we all used in the old days. Not these days, we're using hybrid mirrorless cameras. So there's gonna be uh, an overlap between my favorite camera and my favorite video camera, but um, we'll get to my favorite camera towards the end of this video. But my favorite video camera, well there's three to choose from. So I've got two runner ups and I've got a winner. So one of the first runners up is my Nikon Z30, which is over there filming the wide shot. It's a sort of generic wide shot, and is also picking up the audio from my DJI mic. That's over there. So again, I can't show you the video, but take a look at my playlist if you want to look at the my review of the Nikon Z30. And I'll leave a link up here to it as well, so you can take a look at the video of the Nikon Z30 up there. Great compact camera. It's what I take out with me if I'm just going out and about and I don't want to carry anything heavy. Um, fantastic camera. The only downside, it hasn't got a viewfinder. So hence the reason it didn't uh, get into my, you know, my favorite video camera because it hasn't got a viewfinder. But for video, there is no record limit. Um, and it's a great, great little camera to use in the studio here for video. Although there is no image stabilization either. So that's another reason why it didn't reach me, you know, my favorite. But the other runner up is the Canon R10. And I love the R10. This is normally my wide camera. Today, my Panasonic GH5 is the wide camera over there. This would normally be my wide camera. The uh, uh, the R10, it's got all the features that you would need, um, no image stabilization, but it's an APS-C RF mount uh, camera, articulating screen, uh, great autofocus, dual pixel autofocus, 4K video, no record limit. So it's a, if you don't need IBIS, this is fantastic value for money. And it's very, very light, very compact. So um, yeah, the R10 is a great runner up, although it has only got one SD card slot and no image stabilization. So hence the reason it's uh, one of my runner ups, but my favorite video camera I've used in 2022, and I very much look forward to using it a lot more in 2023, is the uh, Canon R7, which I have here. This is normally my main camera. Today is my Canon RP is my main camera. That's giving me lovely bokeh in the background because I've got the 50 mil lens which is my winner for the favorite lens of the year, as I said earlier. Um, but the R7, it builds on the R10, but it has your dual SD card slots 
in the side there, great for redundancy and backup. It's the switch on the top has got a separate switch for photo and video. So that is great, you can easily and quickly get into photographs or videos. Um, great in-body image stabilization. So if you're using lenses that are not image stabilized, is great. And it does 4K 10-bit uh, 422 internally as well. And it's got Canon C-Log3. So all in all, a really, really extensive sort of video features and a great video camera. And again, no video record limit. And I haven't managed to get it to overheat either. So um, all in all, fabulous, fabulous video camera. So this wins my video camera of the year, the Canon R7. Now to my favorite action camera of the year. Now I'm not an action man, so I don't buy many action cameras, but I use them for specific purposes. And one of them is for point of view footage. Uh, for example, when I went to London, I used the DJ, DJI Action 2, which is here. Um, it is, you know, really compact actually. That is the camera, um, uh, that is, that is the camera, really, really tiny, isn't it? And that's the sort of monitor and backup uh, battery, but also there's a monitor on the back of this module as well. So um, fantastic little camera, great 4K quality and HD quality as a monitor on the back there. And I've got various brackets and adapters and I usually have it run, hanging around my neck so I can get point of view footage of me uh, showing you know you guys and gals what it is I'm actually filming so that would have been my winner but I couldn't decide whether this is my favorite action cam or what I've recently purchased is the Insta360 X3. Now I'm going to be using that continuously during 2023 because it has features that is great for me Again, point of view footage, so I can stick it on the top of a camera and get a whole 360 degree view of what it is I'm photographing or filming. I'm actually using it up here. So the shot that you're looking at now will hopefully be from the Insta360 X3. It shows the studio and I can edit in whatever scene I want. So when I uh, do the editing, I put it into the Insta360 app and I can choose what part of that 360 image I want to end up in the final edit. So uh, there's a tie for the winner is the uh, DJI Action 2, which I will use constantly because I can just hang it around my neck and the Insta360 X3, which is on a uh, bracket up there. So um, great little cameras if you need that sort of, you know, that sort of image. Now on to my favorite lighting products of the year. And I get sent quite a lot of lighting products to, for review, but I have two favorites, but one favorite manufacturer. I think this manufacturer makes fantastic products. I have to say they do send them to me for review. I don't pay for them, but I use them constantly and can highly recommend these products. So the runner up, uh, which could easily have been a winner, but the runner up is the Wheelight SO5. I've got two here, they do them in, in various colors. I've got the, the gray and the blue. Um, they're USB chargeable, and it's basically a little switch on the back there to power it on, and then you've got your light here. And the great thing with the Wheelight products, all the uh, color temperatures can be changed. They're uh, RGB lights, but they can be changed using the app on your mobile phone. So uh, brilliant. Again, take a look at my uh, reviews of the Wheelight products, but the Wheelight SO5, brilliant compact little light, as light as anything, shove it in your pocket, controllable uh, from your smartphone. So that's a brilliant product. And the other one, which is the winner, is the WP35, a Wheelight WP35. And here it is. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's designed to fit on a stand. It's not a, a, on top of your camera light. It's a studio light, RGB light. Um, I've got uh, plugged into the back of it two uh, Sony batteries at the moment. Let's just power it on. And you can see, let's just turn that on a second. You can see on the back there, the panel comes on. You can make all the adjustments using the panel on the back here. Uh, but there's the light. 
but again, designed primarily to be used from your mobile phone. So you can adjust all your color temperatures, everything using your mobile phone. So again, my product of the year, I use this in the studio for virtually all my reviews. I'm not using it today simply because I'm showing you it. But the what lights I am using today is the Wii Light Ninja 300, which is up there. I've got another Wii Light uh, getting the, uh, have this angle up here with a diff big diffuser on it. So um, yeah. Excellent, excellent products. Uh, we like. I would like to thank We Like for sending me these products for review. Again, links where you can buy these from are in the description below. And don't forget to take a look at the individual reviews of these particular products. Now we're on to microphones, and I've split these into two categories because they are kind of separate to be honest. So I've got a category of shotgun microphones and wireless microphones is my other category. So let's look at shotgun microphones first of all. So the runner up is the Rode VideoMic NTG and we have here and a great microphone. It's an on-camera short shotgun microphone. It comes with this um, you know, little windsock. Um, it's more, it's not really a windsock, although it does help to reduce wind noise. It's more to stop the P's and the S's. So a great little microphone, this one. Um, it's got your low cut filter on the top there and it's got auto power on and power off. If you've got a, ca a camera that supports that, vast majority of them do these days, um, it will turn the microphone on automatically and turn it off automatically. And that's great because it saves battery power and you don't forget to turn the microphone on, which I almost did using my Canon RP here. Uh, I did actually remember to turn it on, well, I hope I have. I mean, the audio levels are working because uh, I'm using my Comica microphone as me uh, backup. Uh, but I normally use this one on the close-up camera. So it's the Rode NTG and it's got a gain control actually on the microphone. I usually have this set to the highest level, um, the highest output, so I can turn the levels down on the preamps of the camera. Uh, so yeah, that's the runner-up. But the winner, because I've been using it all year, brilliant microphone, been lost without it, is the Sennheiser MKE 600. And I've got it here. Um, I can't show you it well, that, my Insta360 might be picking it up, but the uh, Sennheiser MKE 600, uh, I use that for backup audio and that goes into my Tascam uh, Mixcast 4 uh, to pick up the audio. And that, that then is fed into my, uh, today, into my Panasonic GH5. So the MKE 600, great microphone. It requires a 48 volt power supply, but you can plug a AA battery into it uh, and that is great. So if you want to stick it on top of your camera, put a AA battery in with an XLR to 3.5mm uh, jack adapter and away you go. Great, great microphone, beautiful sound from the MKE 600. So that wins the uh, shotgun microphone uh, of 2022 for me. So let's now look at wireless microphones. Now I've reviewed a lot of wireless microphones during 2022 and there's three that I really love using all the time. And it doesn't really matter which one of these kits you buy, you're gonna be very, very happy with them. And again, I must remind you, there will be links in the description below to where you can buy this kit from. But the first one is the small rig kit. Now this is the uh, kit here and it comes in its own case which is really compact. Audio quality is great. Um, what I like about the small rig kit is it's very tactile because it's got proper knobs for adjusting your gain control uh, and you can set it to mono, stereo um, and what have you. And obviously two transmitters. All of these kits I'm showing you now will have two transmitters. So that's the small rig kit. But as I say, take a look at my individual review of a small rig kit. It comes in this little pouch. So, you know, Great kit, great audio quality, you know, highly recommend the small rig microphones. The other one, which I extremely recommend, is the um, Full Aim Pro 1000. And again, it comes in its own case. This actually is a charging case. A small rig kit isn't. And that's why it didn't uh, come as a winner, because uh, you can't charge the microphones up. Uh, in, well, you can charge them up in the case, but the case isn't hasn't got a built-in battery to keep them charged. Where with a full aim one, it is. You put them in the case, and the case has got its own uh, battery in, which keeps them on charge. So you can put them back in the case. You don't have to worry about finding a wall socket to charge them. Um, but um, that is the kit. Uh, so again, you've got your 
uh, one uh, receiver and your uh, two transmitters. Fantastic quality, uh, comes with Lavellia microphones, your wind socks, all the cables you need in this pouch. Brilliant piece of kit, so, um, and great sound quality. But the one I use so much of the time is the DJI mic, which I've got here. Um, I love the sound quality from the DJI mic. What you're listening to now is the DJI mic. Um, and again, comes in its own case, which is also a charging case, just like the Full Aim 1000. Um, and it comes with a lightning and a USB-C adapter, so you can use it with uh, mobile, mobile phones, and you can use it with other pieces of equipment. I could use this with my DJI Action 2, because it just plugs straight into it. Um, yeah, the microphone's very, very good quality. But one of the advantages with a DJI mic, they've got built-in audio recorders in the microphone. So you've got uh, redundancy built in. And if you walk far away from the transmitter, it will still record the audio. So you've got that, you know, backup. And that's why I like using the DJI mic. Although, ironically, I'm not using the recording facilities today because I'm running so many microphones, but I, I don't need it here in the studio. But I do if I'm going out and about. So um, yeah, the DJI mic wins my wireless microphone category of the year. My favourite camera bag that I've purchased in 2022 uh, is two, but they both come from the same manufacturer. So again, it's a tie. It's not really a runner up and a winner because I use them both for different purposes. So one of them is the Billingham Hadley Pro. I think most of you would have guessed I probably would have chosen the Billingham. I have used so many different brands of camera bag. I always come back to Billingham. I love the build quality. I love the flexibility. They look beautiful. They handle beautiful. Uh, so this is the Hadley Pro, um, the, the, digit, um, the Billingham Hadley Pro Small is what it is. Um, handle on top, fantastic. And you've got your you know, really, really nice strap protection on the top to protect it if you you know if you do put anything on the top here that protects the kit inside and two or three pouches you can put in there and you can get a lot of kit in there plus external pockets which is fantastic for putting all your bits and bobs in there i've got various junk in here at the moment but that's the uh the billingham hadley pro small Digital Hadley, no, the Billingham, I put in the, in the video what it is. It's the Billingham uh, Hadley Pro Small, something like that. Um, so that's one of them. And my favorite Billingham bag, because it's so compact, is the Billingham Digital. I've got two of these bags. I use them absolutely constantly. Take them out even if I'm not taking my camera gear out, I put stuff in it. But um, yeah, really compact, easily fit a body and a lens, sometimes two bodies if they're smaller. So again, you've got your protection on the top there, your inside pockets, and you've got your big um, external pocket. So well made. These last for donkey's years. These will outlive me, that's for sure. Um, fantastic quality camera bags. They don't come cheap. This is the thing with Billingham bags. They're not cheap, but they last you forever. They're such nice bags. So again, links in the description to those products. So. They're my favourite camera bags is, well, uh, made by Billingham. Now we'll take a look at my favourite gadget of 2022, either that I've purchased or has been sent to me for review. So my runner up of the favourite gadget of 2022 is the Snap Grip. And it's basically this. Um, it's a little grip that has got a shutter release, a Bluetooth shutter release, and a built-in battery, and it charges your phone and mounts your phone. So you just clip your phone straight onto there like that. That is now really strong connection, magnetic connection, and that works now as a grip for your mobile phone. And it's also charging your mobile phone while you're taking photographs or video. And that is great when I'm going out and about because it just makes it so much easier to take photographs and video on a mobile phone when you've got a proper camera grip. So that is my runner up as my uh, favourite gadget of the year. But the winner by a long way is the Axoon Cineview SE. And 
what that, that is, is brilliant. Uh, this was sent to me for review. They sent me two of them, actually. And it's basically a transmitter and receiver that transmits a HD signal with audio to either a monitor, uh, and Atomos recorder, so you can record that signal, or an app on your mobile phone or your tablet. So these are great, because in the studio here, I've got my Nikon Z30 over there. I can't see that monitor. It's far too far away for my eyes to see. So I've got that transmitting, it's over there, and I've got that transmitting to my Mac Mini, to my uh, iPad Mini, and it's great. So I've got on here, I don't know if you can see that, that is actually showing what that camera is looking at. It's showing me that it's recording. It's showing me the audio levels on the app. So you can either connect it, as I say, to a portable monitor, or you can connect it to an app on your mobile phone or your mobile device, and that is brilliant. So I can see, I don't care how far away that is, I can clearly see the angle is fine, the color balance is fine. It's got all sorts of other features on this app. So you can check your white balance, you can check your focus, because it's got focus peaking, it's got zebra settings, false color, uh, and all the rest of it. So yeah, the Axoon Cineview SE is by far my winner for favorite gadget of 2022, because I will use it in the studio on every single shoot that I do, um, and use it out and about as well, because the distance it transmits at uh, is quite a long distance. It's about 120 meters. So, uh, you know, very, very impressive piece of kit. So we're now coming towards the end of this video, and there's two categories left. My favorite camera, and my favorite overall piece of kit that I've purchased in 2022. Now the runner up for my favorite camera is the Canon R10, and here it is. Um, the only reason it's the runner up is simply because there is no IBIS in this particular camera, where the winner has got IBIS, and it's only got one SD card slot, which is basically in where the battery compartment goes, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, otherwise that probably would have won camera of the year, but fantastic value for money. Now there's a great choice of lenses for the Canon RF range of cameras. Now I know many people criticize the fact that Canon aren't allowing third party manufacturers to make autofocus lenses for the RF mount. But I think what a lot of people are forgetting, you can adapt EF and EFS lenses to work on your Canon R6, uh, v, well, the R6, but the R7 and the R10 and all the other RF bodies. And that's what I do. And there's many, many EF and EF lenses available and from third party manufacturers and they work great on the R10. So the R10 is my runner up for favorite camera, both for stills photography and both for video. 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. So, you know, it's a great all-rounder. Uh, it's got a fantastic articulating screen. Um, so it's a travel camera because it is so light, um, it's a winner. And it's got a, you know, really, really nice viewfinder. So that's the runner up. But the winner for my favorite camera of 2022, which I so much look forward to using a lot in 2023, is without a doubt, the Canon R7. Uh, there was no choice for this. This was definitely with a fantastic grip, lovely handling, in-body image stabilization, two, two SD card slots on the side. Um, it's got a 30, I mean, it's 32 megapixel APS-C sensor, um, RF mount, so you can adapt all your EF and EFS lenses, uh, really good battery life, separate switch for video and photos, um, and uh, awesome handling. And my, one of my favorite handling features of this, I've got it set up for three autofocus uh, methods um, in one go. So um, I can set it up for humans, and that's basically, I just push this autofocus button in here, I'm out of focus on, I use eye detect to detect humans, and I've got this button set up for detecting animals. Uh, so I can very quickly switch between photographing me cats by just pushing this button in, photographing humans by pushing that button in, or I've got it set to um, spot meter, uh, spot focusing, spot focusing, I don't know if that's what we call it, but one area focusing for general, you know, things that I focus on and general photographs that I take. So the Canon R7 definitely wins my favorite camera of 2022, and it could easily have won my favorite product um, for 2022, but it didn't. Um, uh, because it's not something I use all the time, every single time. 
but there is an item that I use all the time for all my YouTube videos, all my photography, um, everything that I do to do with this channel and for my own personal life. So that's the next category, my favorite product of 2022. So my favorite product of 2022, what is it? It is none other than the Apple Mac Mini, M1 Mac Mini, and here it is. I use this constantly for all my photographs, my video, my cine editing, um, everything that I do, communications, email, whatever, and it's great. It very rarely crashes on me. I mean, I'm running um, no end of programs here. I'm running the screen recorder in the background. My emails are running, um, and it is just an awesome, uh, piece of kit. Now it's the Mac Mini that I'm running. I'm actually got a Samsung uh, 4K screen connected to it. The Mac Mini is down there. I don't think any of these cameras have picked that up. Um, and you know, brilliant, brilliant piece of kit. If you're into video editing, photography, any form of content creation, there is such. There is now you know the Mac Studio. Uh, there's the iMac. There's many variants to this. Um, but the M1 chip, the M1 silicon chip is great i get really excited about you know this particular apple product i love all apple products but this particular product for me definitely wins the overall category of everything because it's used for everything the cameras i use depending on what i'm doing the audio equipment depends on what i need um you know the gadgets depends on what i'm doing this doesn't this is constant regardless of what I'm doing. Like this video, I'm doing a five camera shoot and it will be edited as a multi-cam edit on the Mac Mini. So definitely wins, you know, wins everything. I absolutely love it. You know, I can switch between all sorts of programs without fear of anything crashing. I mean, obviously occasionally it does crash, but generally speaking, very powerful, very reliable, um, and, you know, a great, great, it's even with recording, uh, the image in the background is still working a treat. So yeah, the Mac Mini uh, wins my category, overall category for 2022. So there we go, my favorite gear of 2022, whether I've purchased it or whether it's been sent to me for review. As I said at the beginning, there will be links in the description below where you can purchase this gear from, and there will be a playlist in the description if you want to take a look at individual videos um, of this gear. So thanks very much for watching. Have a fantastic 2023, have a fantastic New Year celebration, and I look forward to doing more videos in 2023 and building the channel you know, even more. So if you've got any comments, anything you'd like me to review please let me know and i'll see what i can do thanks very much stay tuned for more videos related to video photography podcasting so on and so forth and i look forward to seeing everyone in 2023 thanks very much cheers for now bye